Right, it's on YouTube now. Have you messaged Lubo? I can give us the link. I can. I already messaged it to the committee. It's on your phone right now. What, the oh, Facebook, yeah. Yep. Okay.
consumers. Got it. Understand. Okay. Um, so at this stage, um, this product is still under development. Um, and then uh, next year, we'll be looking at going to trials. Um, and so this whole area um, of V2G, um, there are a number of trials that are happening around the world. And uh, we hope to take our, our product um, uh, to trial next year. And so the first, I guess the first um, uh, thing that uh, we're looking at is um, uh, is what called uh, vehicle to grid. And so the idea of that is it allows someone uh, to be able to export power uh, to the grid. Um, and uh, they're just like you can with your solar, you can sell energy back into the grid. And so the other, the other thing that these charges can do is that they can provide what's called um, grid support to help um, stabilize the grid um, in terms of um, uh, adjusting um, what we call the power factor to the grid. And that's uh, attractive to, um, to utilities because it helps them manage their grid with all the renewables that go um, into the market. So that's a bit like the, the Tesla battery, the big bank at, uh, in, in Adelaide. Yeah, yeah, but that's on a on a much bigger scale. This is on a, a much smaller scale. Well, I guess um, that um, if you, if we did this on a smaller scale at uh, at volume, so to speak, then we could do. Yeah, that. then then th yes, and certainly uh, people are talking about, as you mentioned before, um, virtual power plants where um, there would be an aggregator who would then um, manage a whole lot of these charges and then present them as a a unified. Um, uh, power source um, or, or a grid um, a s a source to to the to the utilities. So, yeah. um, you know, there, there's all at the moment. Um, uh, we're kind of um, ahead in terms of the technology, and then uh, the utilities who are much more conservative are kind of trying to play catch up, um, and um, and then there's other players who are coming into the market like. Um, the virtual power plant people to look at how we can utilize this, this technology. Um, I was at a conference last year in France um, and you had the charger manufacturers on one side that are really excited about it. You had the automakers really excited um, on the other end talking about V2G and then you had the utility guys in the middle going, well, just, you know, we've, we've got to sort all this out. So, um, it's really, I guess, it's incumbent upon governments to put pressure on utilities to, um, you know, have policies and trials in place to uh, to support and utilise this this technology, and that, and and that's starting to occur in in Europe, um, right. uh, in particular. I was I I noticed that in some of the popular publications that we read that the utilities were uh, resistant, and I, I often wondered. If, I wondered why, because basically we drive electric vehicles, we use electrons, they sell electrons. So I would have thought that anything that promoted the sale of electrons would be great and that they don't seem to be supportive of that. And, but you're saying that there are some technical issues that mean that they are resistant? Yeah, look, look, I think... Um... Um, I think the, the problem is, is that they need money um, to put the infrastructure in place to uh, take the advantage of this. And this is in Australia. Um, and so with our kind of semi-private um, uh, power system, um, uh, our utilities get a certain amount of money to put into projects uh, because they're commercial enterprises and then really then you need governments to talk uh, you know sort of put um, give funding to amino to then fund projects in utilities um, and and you know we, we tend to um, in Australia you know like there's there's a, a big event the politicians uh, notice it and then you know like the South Australian blackouts and then there's lots of um, uh, interest and then money's allocated to do it um, and so in Australia um, as the uh, uptake of electric vehicles increases then that puts pressure on the utilities it'll put pressure on 
um, on, our policy makers. on our policy makers then to uh, say, look, you know, we've we've got to we've got to support this, um, and these are the targets that you need to meet. So, um, you know, so it's important for organisations like yourselves to um, have. You know, good policies, and then to lobby government to um, to put the infrastructure and the policies in place that that support that. Which is interesting because I, I hadn't really thought of it in those terms. I don't know why. Um, we'd always, I'd always thought it about. Well, we need to get the vehicles. We need to to make it uh, a market where uh, we promote, where it's uh, easy to buy, where it's an attractive market to sell electric vehicles. I'd not really thought about it from the terms of we need the, the utilities to be mm, pushed into shape to, to help out. Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, if everyone tomorrow went out and bought an electric vehicle and then went home at six o'clock and put it on the charger, um, we'd be in trouble. Um, our, our infrastructure just simply wouldn't cope with that. So, I mean, uh, you know, the gentle rise of electric vehicles suits suits our utilities, but if there's a, a stark increase, um, uh, then, you know, that's going to put demand on the grid and they're going to have to be able to, to manage that. I have made my pers own personal commitment to that situation by putting a, a, a big-ass solar system on my roof and charging off that, but I, I completely get what you're saying. Yep. Very good. Um, so, so then the, the next thing, and this is kind of what you're talking about, I, the next stage of uh, this bi-directional um, charging is what we call um, vehicle to home. And that, that's where the vehicle can support the home um, uh, by monitoring uh, the amount of power that the house is using. And then um, the vehicle then delivers that to the home so that um, you reduce your amount of power that you get from the grid. So what you could do is you could uh, charge your car during the day on um, solar, and then at peak times, you can then um, export power into your house to support that. Which is exactly the situation that I'm, I'm looking at because I've got two electric vehicles. Yep. I've got a scooter, um, which takes nothing and takes nothing to charge. I've got an a electric a sports car, which I only really use on the weekend, which means it's got this massive big battery, yep. because I like to go a bit fast, um, which sort of sits there during the week, um, doesn't get used that much. So I could use it to to look to uh, manage my home, um, except on the weekend when I go off and roar around, um, around the streets. Yep. So yep. it's exactly the situation that, that I'm looking at and so um, why I'm so interested in, in what you've got. Yep, yep. And then, and then, so the the next stage after that is what's called islanding, and that's where um, uh, you're able to isolate your house from the grid and run your um, your house off your car, um, and that's a bit more exciting. There's a bit more technology that's involved um, in terms of doing that um, isolation from the grid, um, because there's a lot of safety stuff that's got to go in to make sure that. Um, uh, you don't end up electrocuting a, a linesman or um, and that your house is is truly isolated so and so, so is that not completely it's not an island's not islanding is not necessarily completely off grid you're still grid, grid connected but by and large you don't need it is that islanding no 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 um, um uh, islanding is where you disconnect from the grid because most uh, um uh, so anything that puts energy back into the grid um, has to have anti-islancing technology in it to um, protect um, uh, people down downstream of you from getting electrocuted. So, for example, if the power goes off in your street and your solar panels or your bi-directional cars putting power back into the grid and there's a linesman trying to fix the, the lines, uh, the, the fault, um, they'll, get, they'll get electrocuted. So, mm -hmm. so, so um, basically um, a bi-directional charger um, and a solar inverter has to have anti-aliasing technology. So it detects that the grid's gone and then it switches off. So, but with, um, uh, with islanding, what you can do is that your house gets disconnected for the, from the grid using um, disconnect switches. Um, and then you can put power into your house safely without um, uh, um, affecting um, anyone downstream. I understand. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's kind of the, the roadmap of this technology. We, we will start off um, with a, a seven kilowatt um, uh, single phase unit 
um, which is suitable in the Australian and American context. Uh, and that'll be a char demo interface um, because uh, uh, that's, that's the cars that are available. And then we'll uh, look at a single phase um, uh, CCS when that standard becomes available. And then in the European setting, a lot of European houses have three phase. So then we'll look at a, an 11 kilowatt uh, three phase unit. Um, so that's kind of our, our roadmap as, as well as some of these other uh, bits of bits of technology. And can you tell us roughly speaking your, your timeline for that? Um, yeah, look, our, we're hoping to sort of go to trial with Char Demo in about the middle of uh, next year. Um, and then we go through um, compliance uh, testing and then so the product we hope uh, will be available at the end of next year. Um, there's a lot more compliance that you need to go through for a bi-directional charger uh, because you're putting exporting energy back into the grid. So there's a number of standards that we need to uh, comply to to be able to do that safely. I understand. Yeah. And, I, and I guess um, uh, we, we see um, that there's a future for smaller uh, DC chargers, um, particularly we feel that um, eventually as the infrastructure becomes um, uh, more readily available, and you're seeing this in Europe already, um, where there, there's, there's chargers all over the place. We, we don't kind of see it as much in Australia. I mean, particularly in Victoria, it's, it's fairly rare to see a charger. There's, you know, a, a few... Uh, big DC chargers around. Um, but we think eventually um, the automakers will look at removing onboard chargers so that they can uh, save space uh, and put more batteries in to increase the range of their their uh, their, their products. So, oh, okay. So now I, I understand the slide. What you're saying is that yeah. no, no OB, uh, no onboard charger. I get it. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, so it's a bit like you know, <coughs> he headphone jacks. You know, they've, they've disappeared off mobile phones. Uh, you know, probably an equivalent, um, an analogy is uh, if you look at your mobile phone, you don't plug that into the PowerPoint, you have a, a charger. Um, but, you know, in the, in the old days when you could actually travel places, um, uh, places like airports and planes actually have USB ports. So um, you don't need to carry the charger around in your pocket anymore. You can just take a USB lead and plug it into your phone and charge. And so in some ways, this is a bit like electric vehicles as well. Um, as the infrastructure uh, just becomes commonplace, uh, it'll allow um, automakers to either reduce cost because there's a bit of cost putting a charger into a car. It reduces weight and then it, it also gives them the option of putting um, uh, more more batteries into the car to extend range. So, so we, we see that there's a place for DC chargers, um, that smaller DC chargers, as well as the bigger ones into the into the future. Um, so that's really kind of the um, uh, the end of my presentation. If there's any other Correct questions, rectify a story and, and a, a 101 on charging. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, Not a problem. Asking any questions. Unfortunately, we don't have don't have the uh, participants that are listening uh, to our can't ask. Um, we might see if we can get some. Any questions from my my co-hosts? Uh, trying to recover from the disaster. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much, Paul. Not um, a problem. So we've recorded it, it'll be released later, and, and I'm sort of hoping that we'll find another way in the future to do this much more successfully, and, and hopefully we'll invite you along, and, and hopefully you're gracious, you um, join us again. Not a problem. Look, it's been a pleasure uh, joining you uh, today. Um, Thanks, Paul. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so the next step is a quiz. The next step is the quiz. So for those that are they're out there listening on the streaming world, um, uh, if you can go to menti.com, uh, the URL is at the top of the screen. Uh, the code is also at the top of the screen. Uh, if you go along to Menti uh, and look at the poll, there's questions there. There's at least 30 people in the YouTube stream right now. So, um, and so, uh, men do men do it. Menti.com uh, with, with the can't see the code. Yeah, no, they can't see you holding it. Can't see me holding it. Oh, you can see me holding it now. Oh, this is the prize, which is um, 
uh, dash cam. So if you, like I say, go to menti.com, enter in the code, uh, answer in the questions, then you'll be the proud owner uh, of, uh, of our prize. All right, so I'm just gonna get the screen off again. There we go. So let's go for the first question and see if we can get anyone in it. Waiting for players. So we're waiting for people to join. So in the meantime, whilst we're waiting for people to join, we might just go through the rest of our quick agenda, which is try and get us a bit back on track. Um, do we have the uh, chairman's, chairman's report? Well, that's me. Um, that was quite quick because we yeah, haven't no done an awful lot this, uh, this last month. Uh, one Zoom meeting and, and one catch up where we went to, where, where did you go? Mike? Uh, um, well, maybe I won't. Maybe Olympic Park. Olympic Park. And um, what else have we got? Um, I was chosen just now to ring me. <laughs> Hold on, who is it? Hello. Well, maybe you can take that Hello. Week. Yes, can I take this another time? <laughs> I'm right in the middle of the meeting. Well, it's for streaming live. Yep. Right. So since my report's so boring, um, mm -hmm. we'll go, got anything for us, um, Tom? If you get some, an update from the Vice President, the Vice Chair. Okay, well, a, a few things from my point of view. We did have a small gathering at Olympic Park. We went to check out the, uh, what's called the brickwork ring. I call it the frog ring. You know, they had the green and, bell, green and gold <coughs> bell frogs there. Um, you, you had, uh, I, I think we had Richard. We had, um, goodness me, we had uh, Richard, Charles and uh, Darren uh, along. So, you know, we met up, we had uh, we had a lunch at a cafe there and then eventually we wandered around the brick pit. So that was uh, pretty enjoyable, I guess. And I suppose we're more thinking of future meetings. But yes, we do want to get out to uh, Darren's place and that'll be a Saturday. We'll hopefully have enough warning so people can get along to that. That's, no, uh, that's actually a, a Sunday. So is this a segue into, into the proposed meetings? We might oh, yeah, yes. I guess I'm going on to proposed meetings. Oh, yeah, but yeah. I, I thought, thought Darren wanted his meeting on a, on a Saturday. I guess uh, we'll have to I watch. talked to him about it. He's agreed to a Sunday. So, I don't know, maybe he's flexible. Okay, I'll have to right. sort it out with him. Okay, and the other thing is, as Jamie comes online, we'll, we'll hopefully have something up in the Blue Mountains. And there's also uh, going out, I, I hope to go to Lithgow. The um, but uh, as uh, I wonder, I suppose that's more. Oh, yes, another thing I will mention is if you go to the Sydney Mechanics School of Arts website, the uh, talk that I gave on intellectual property and the right to repair and so on, there is actually a video of that you can check out. Uh, that's a bit of overlap with electric vehicles, particularly when it comes to conversions. But uh, yeah, there's something there if you want to have a look at that. Okay, um, one other thing. Start, we'll just wait, um, stop for a moment. We'll uh, sorry, be, break in transition. Be, before, we'll I, before we go. Start the questions. Oh. So just wait. Just, just Why wait. is it that I always get cut off? Mm. Oh, sorry. No one else gets cut off. Sorry, Only me. Only you? No, I'm sure I cut off John. No, you no. What is the depth of the Highbury DC bi-directional charger? Whoa, okay, what is the depth? Oh, okay, there so are the three physical, answers. physical depth of the charger. Better hurry up. Thumbs up. Well, there we go. Look at that. Wow, people, All people are in it. Okay. Question two. Question two. Sorry, I didn't mention. Oh, can I can I continue? No, you have to, you have to stop uh, and sit now. Uh, I've really screwed you up. Next question. What does V2G stand for? Well, lucky that I didn't say that out loud properly. <laughs> I was going about to say, but what I'll just mess things up. This one's too easy. I'm messing it up. No, I'll get this one wrong. Oh, right. I must have tried. There we go. Oh my god. <laughs> so that was you, wasn't it? Yeah. All right. Okay. You're playing silly baggers. Next question. Question three. So. Uh, this is the leaderboard. The leaderboard. Okay. So Doug's out there in front. Jason Meter's coming last. No, no, no. He's, 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 uh, he's, well, actually, he well, can't. I actually just pushed the button too quickly. And, you know, I think you wrote the questions. I, I did write the questions. <laughs> Question five. 
this is kind of fun with this game. Oh, why the hell is it skipping at this leaderboard? Oh, sorry. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh. Yeah. Technical, technical oh. issues. Oh, you know why? Because I pressed the arrow too quick. Ah. <laughs> All right, so First question five was a... Was not, was question, a what is a contact arm? Which is actually question six. I think I missed my calling as a show, show, show <laughs> host. Okay, can we go back to question five? Switch. I don't know if I can go back. Here we go, now just keep going. Yeah. Alright. Was it you again? Missing that number? I didn't, I didn't answer. Right. Question seven. Yeah, can you charge an EV? What when, when can you charge an EV the most effectively? It's an interesting question. Basically. Doesn't matter. Is it multiple choice? Mm -hmm. When the battery is empty. <laughs> Okay, and the question eight, the penultimate question. Oh, we should have seen a leader boy before this one. Uh, well, honestly, this is the first go of doing this. The uh, Tesla Model 3 standard range version carries how many cells arranged in 96 groups of 31? So, in the number of cells. <laughs> this is a hot now, If you're, you're quick on the calculator, you should be able to get this. <laughs> oh, well, I couldn't tell that. Yeah, I think we'll do these questions a bit later. Oh my God! So many people. Wow. Going. Okay. Either a quick calculator or yeah, quick on the calculator. More knowledgeable than I thought. Oh, you're lucky. So, so the winner is. Uh, Ooh. shit. Joe. John Lewis. No. Doug. Doug. Doug gets a bloody web dash cam. Okay, Doug. Uh, Do we have his contact details? Well, I was going to say, Doug, send us your contact details. Uh, either uh, treasurer at aiva.asn.au, uh, because that's me, or, um, or Mark at secretary. Well, actually, Jason's probably the man, because oh, he's got the place. thing. Which is treasurer. At, treasurer. Um, uh, no, it's not treasurer. It's, treasurer. You haven't got your email account yeah, set up, is he? Yeah, oh, okay. All right, treasurer at uh, newsofwales.aiva.asn.au. Or Doug is... King the Ava page on YouTube. Contact us. <laughs> and, okay. and nobody pretend to be dope. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. I okay, back to Mark. back to the secretary's back to normal report. Programming. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay. I need pictures of events. So if anyone who's been to, for instance, Bundanoon can send me one picture. There's per a person. bucket load of Bundanoon pictures on the Facebook page. Is there? Is Good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Olympic Park. Uh, More, another one. Send me one picture per person. I think we're all just so shaken by the. Or you can put them on the Facebook page. Lack of attendance by people who organise the event. Cheap shot, John. Right, no, good news. I was at a Christmas. I was busy. Busy. I was at a Christmas. Well, to to be sure, I I I received. I, I stepped up to the plate at very late notice on that one, so I had other things on my mind. Okay. Um. The um, other thing. Okay, um, I'd like to propose that we have a new position, which is the social organizer. Um, so, with duties of organizing meetups. So, I'd like people to nominate themselves. So, please nominate. This is important because it needs to be done. and. I can't really do it all, so. I nominate Mark Roberts. <laughs> well, Mark, I have, I been, I have been helping out here and there, and I hope to continue. Would you, would you like to nominate John? Well, so I'm, yes. I'm already the vice the, chair. John, the correct answer is yes. And I'm already the vice chair. Okay, okay well, you can see the problem. Uh, if anyone wants to nominate, please go ahead. Um, lots of people your... have suggestions, oh, helpful some oh, of them. Let us know, ping us. <laughs> Treasurer at aiva.ac.au. Uh, Okay, so what are we up to? Well, then the, I think it goes straight into the proposed meetups. I think that's the. Um, okay. Well, we, we did have um, infrastructure officer Andreas. I'm sorry, I don't think we can. We can't dive let in you due to technical Do your issues. presentation we'll if you've got one or time. talk, sorry. whichever. So we'll just have to do it another time. Another time. Sorry, Andreas. But then we, do we want to talk if about. If you were out there, that is. Proposed, the proposed meetups for next month? 
Uh, yes, the we did have a few proposed meetups. Um, I think Facebook is the place to be talking about this. So if people have a strong opinion, and we have an and, issue, and you know. especially if someone wants to nominate to be the organizer, um, the nominations are the Rocks, Darling Harbour, Barangaroo. Now those are the, in the city. The um, more outside of the city area ones are Charles's place in Little Hartley, which is up near Lithgow. Uh, Jamie's place, which is also up in the Blue Mountains near Wentworth Falls um, and has bushwalking and lookouts. Uh, and Darren's place, which is at Jordan Springs, um, which so, is between Penrith and Windsor. So it's a bit sort of like in the city and it may be a bit easier. Maybe we can um, just get them to do it in the comments on YouTube and Facebook. We are yeah, currently streaming. Please talk about this on Facebook online in particular on the Sydney Ava Facebook page. And if you've got any other ideas, any other options, uh, yep, any other know. suggestions, that's the place. I think we should also mention that there is the event at Manildra on the 25th of October for uh, those who uh, wanted. Yes, that was, that was in coming events, John. No, okay, fair enough. I thought it was events generally. Yeah. But okay. Chop me off. Coming in mix. And you also did mention Andrea's event, which is sort of outside yeah, of well, the item ten. So okay, well, well so. anyone want to roll straight into into that one then? Okay. Um the coming events. So Charles Delitz has Chris, Chris Delitz. Oh uh, sorry. Chris, Chris. Chris. Sorry, Chuck. Sorry, Chris. Sorry. Uh Chris Delitz has uh organized an EV display and film day at Manildra. They're looking at the twenty fifth of October, I think. I don't know if it's got actually gone firm on the 25th. I think but... it has. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually got a yeah. flyer that's been in circulation. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, and if you haven't seen it, let us know. Vehicles well, should arrive off. around midday and display them. And then at 1.30, go inside to the film. The details will be passed to Michael. Um, most, most vehicles will be sourced locally, but visitors are welcome. And uh, they will be working with COVID restrictions, so it should be all good. Um, and yeah. the film, it's the F uh, Ford versus Ferrari. F Ford versus Ferrari, that's the film. Oh, okay, so yes. so maybe not such an electrical film, but certainly they want an EV display. Film. I, I did have two other things I wanted to talk about. One is the, um, the um, New South Wales government um, is working with Ausgrid to make all the um, green power boxes on the side of the street seat street side ones which are suitable at least um into charging stations really really so and um, um uh open to anyone or uh well initially they they were talking about having a 15 minute charging time yeah. and then uh, yeah then you'd have to pay something I'm not yeah. really sure how that actually would work um yeah eligible for 50 motors be Motorists will be eligible for 15 <coughs> minutes of free charging, the equivalent of seven kilowatt hours per day. Well, that's I'm not exactly sure how that it would work because yeah. seven kilowatt hours per that would. Um, yeah. Anyway, and I'm sure they'll work out the details. Um, yeah. So 15 minutes for free. I don't know if they're going to be charging after the first 15 minutes. It doesn't actually say that, but anyway, it's there. Um, the other thing is IKEA, which is in the process of uh, rolling out solar panels on all the rooftops of the stores uh, in the nation. This is not just New South Wales. And um, also charging infrastructure for customers, employees and delivery vehicles. So Did they there, talk there about is some progress. What they were and what, and what they might charge or do you know? I that? believe it would be free. No mention, no mention of how much it's going to cost. So that means, to my way of thinking, that means free. Um, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, tough. <laughs> tough. Okay, so that means coming events, the That's it. I'm trying me. not to cut you off this time. Okay. I'm trying to... Uh, we've done coming events. Coming events, which means other business. Other business, yes. So current projects. Uh, Lotus update. I just about finished the battery pack and uh, the motor mount, so I should have the motor spinning before the end of the month, um, which means I might, we could probably, if I do, if that happens, we could probably organise a meetup at my place. Um, we'll, we'll think about that. Um, John, you're probably the other project guy. Okay, all right. I'll mention the uh, 
work that, have, that myself and Jeff have been doing on the I3. So we have had an engineer look at the I3 and he's willing to say, yeah, you know, in terms of the steering, the general state of the vehicle should be repairable to get it back to roadworthy condition. The one missing ingredient is an impact absorber, which is connected to the cabin. Now that's it's this hexagonal rigid thing that has a, a partially crushed one end. And the plan that we're planning to do is to cut that with a hacksaw and cut another equivalent module that, that hasn't been damaged and basically glue them together and make the case that that glue together item, you know, proper commercial, you know, commercial grade glue that would survive for 10 years and also survive an accident will have an energy absorption ability larger than the original. Of course, it weighs more than the original, which is why that would be justifiable. And that would be the one missing ingredient to then say, look, here's a report that says this car is repairable to roadworthy condition. Well, you've got a spare I3, so you should be able to get one off the other one. Is that That's right? correct. That is the plan to basically cut the because, but well, I, I well, I suppose that it, yeah, basically there's our there's our module. The top end of it is crushed, so you cut it there, and then you take a similar module from another the other other I three and put it on the end, and then glue it together. And that that is really the only missing ingredient to justify that the car would be uh, repairable to, to to Australian standards. So once you've done that, the, this guy is willing to sign off and say that it's repairable. Is that right? We yeah. hope so. Let's just say one thing at a time, but that would be the next missing ingredient. And we have to, I don't know what processes we have to go through to justify that this thing would actually have energy absorption in excess of the original. I think I can make a quite sensible, intuitive argument. If I need to hire a professional engineer to do finite element analysis on it, well, I'll do that. <laughs> so we'll see how we yeah. go. All right. So, All right. Well, I've got something to say as well. On my leaf, I've now uh, purchased practically all the parts I need. Um, I haven't received them all, but I've paid money for them. So um, the only other step, the only other thing I need to buy is a full size battery. Parts you need for what? For, what for my leaf extender, ah. the battery extender. Um, so once I've, once I've done it with the testing pack, which I already have, um, I'll, uh, I'll then work out what I'm going to do with the full size battery, um, which would, I'd hope, live under the boot. What kind of cells are you using in the, the extended? I'm planning on using, uh, okay, the, the tester is just um, 18650s, mm -hmm. but when I. When SD, TIs, the Samsungs, and things. Probably with a, that's a free plug. Don't, you know. .com .au. Dot com dot .com.au, I think, yeah. I think I've already looked at them, but mm -hmm. anyway. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's the state. Uh, so that's the end of the official program, as messed up as it was. Um, the next thing is we've got meetings in November. So the idea is we'll have an online meeting uh, <coughs> on the 18th. Uh, we'll have to figure that out. It'll probably be registering. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to have to register. And then everyone has to register. Register, register. Well, yeah. Uh, and then another in December. So, oh, sorry, the, the 18th of November, then we're hoping to do one of these drives for potential physical meetups um, during November, and then also something around the 16th of December. Uh, so I, I would suggest the, the most practical thing to do in short term is Darren's Place. So I think that would be... Uh, Darren's Place. Where is Darren's Place again? That's between. Jordan Springs, which is midway between Windsor and Penrith. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I think that would be the... the the easiest, most grabbable. Do you know one. what a okay. charging is, is like at Darren's place? Has he got the capability to charge? And, yeah. and just double tracking, what's the what's the good news about Darren's place? Why is it? Uh, He's got lots of toys. But lots of toys. Bikes, and what's more, sort of he's telling me he's willing to host a barbecue. So we get yes. there, vague plan, get there about 11 o'clock, loiter around for about two hours to one o'clock, you'll have a barbecue. We'll be able to basically, and you know, well, I mean, we visited Jeff, and yeah, Jeff's at times is, is quite a gracious host too. So, you know, I guess, uh, I, I, I guess, uh, Darren's wanting to compete with that. So there well, you go. Okay, well, then, then the uh, um, friendly competition. Plan A is, yeah. uh, is Darren's place. Uh, we'll uh, try and follow that up and let people right. know. So we'll, now. so we'll put soon. we'll pencil in Darren's place for the first option. And then hopefully following that, Jamie might be able to get his charging set up going for a trip to uh, Wentworth Falls, Wentworth and, Falls. Just, and, and around around the Blue Mountains. Main focus of operation will be Wentworth Falls. 
but people could go to the um, what, what, what's that place with the railway there? Um, scenic railway. The scenic railway. Scenic uh, railway. The why car don't park we just there. invite John over to his house, who's an electrician, to install his charger? Which John are you talking about? <laughs> the BMW John. I I three John. Oh, okay. Yeah. Someone an electrician. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> take him there. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so that's the end of our formal agenda. Feedback on locations, uh, feedback on ideas on where you might like to go. Uh, any questions? Oh, Hang on, what about this uh, Cronulla car coffee and cars thing? It's, What's uh, it? Probably it's, probably it's last we heard, they're out. That the, the council's shut them down. The council's so, shut them down. That's a bit sad. They're, yeah. they're on the back burner yeah. until COVID. I mean, the, the moment that it comes back on the boil, I figure we should give it a shot. In fact, okay. they've. they've um, Jason was saying they've offered it a offered us a corner of the of the site, so we can be all electric in that corner of the. No, we'll no, take no. it over. Yeah. No, yeah. Jolly, jolly, Today, decent, jolly decent coffee offer. and cars. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as, as soon as it's back on, I think we should do it. For it. Right. Yeah. As soon as they're allowed to, to get back on. Call, all right. right. Um, should we turn Kill this it. thing off? Kill okay. it. Good night. Actually, right. one more thing. No, still oh, like... oh, yeah.